Uh, next up we have Jana. So Jana, the question for you is, how do you build relationships so as to earn buy-in and trust with your wellness program? All right, ha ha, got it. <laughs> so I have to say first, I'm sitting out, some of you know me and kind of know that I'm kind of all over the place. So I'm sitting in my chair the last two days and I'm like bubbling inside with, oh my gosh, have you ever sat in the conference and you're like, I'm doing that. I think I'm doing something right. And so I was so excited this morning when I was listening to Dean and then Polly because they were talking about intrinsic motivation. And um, so when you talk about building trust in an organization, that's one of the hardest things to do in an organization, right? And when I came to the city of Olathe, wellness was not new for them. They had had wellness since 2009, and they had had an on-site clinic with another vendor. And when I happened to come on board, they, um, we were changing vendors and going to RFP. I was like, oh, great. So there was some challenges, and they're like, who is this Jana lady, and what's she going to do for us? Because they had never had a well-being coordinator before. So I had some challenges, and I'm going to think, how am I going to earn their trust? And I had been to the Wellcoa conference, and does anyone, do any of you go to the Wellcoa conference? If, if you don't, it's a great conference to go to. But they talked about intrinsic motivation, and so I tried to start convincing um, my leadership, okay, we, yeah, we do great monetary incentives. We've done, you guys have done this for many, many years. We do outcome incentives. We do lots of things to try to nudge the um, employees in the right direction. But how are we going to sustain this wellness program? Because many of you who have had wellness programs for many years, do you start, you see that people keeping them engaged and keeping them interested because people kind of get bored, right? Um, they either want a bigger incentive or what's in it for me type of mentality. So you have to connect to them. You have to, what's your why? So how was I going to build trust to start building this intrinsic motivation within our department and within the city? Because the city, we have all the different departments. I love it that there's more municipalities um, here this year. It's exciting to network with you and see what you're doing. But when you have, five, for those of you who are in a municipality, fire and police, they're not friends. <laughs> So having a competition between the two to try to bring those and unite them, that's kind of fun. And telling them, hey, I did this for police. now, And they're like, well, why'd you do something for them and not us? So, you know, trying to build that trust. So I thought what I'd do, um, Polly gave you guys some great examples in, um, of intrinsic motivation. But I want to give you a couple of the other examples that we're doing at the city. And we have about... A thousand employees, um, give or take about 200 to 300, depending on the type of year, from seasonal workers. So lots of from water works to fire to police, to public works to every trash. So here's a couple of things that we started doing. And the first thing we started doing was we created champions or a well-being committee. And so we brought in peers, and they didn't have to look the part, they just had to support the part, right? They had to be a champion and be a good communicator within their department. They had to be able to commit to, when we come into these meetings, going back and sharing ideas, and bringing ideas from the departments to share with the group. And how can we, because each department's like a little city within a big organization. They all have individual needs. So how do you take a walking challenge um, for our city clerk's office and then also incorporate that into our solid waste department? Because our solid waste department, they come in at 7 and as soon as they're done with their route, they're done. Do you think they're going to take time off their trash truck to stop and go walking? No. They want to get out of there and get done. And they're not going to come to a lunch and learn. So you have to take members from those departments and see how your initiatives are going to affect each individual apartment, department and cater to them. So the well-being committee was great. It created this two-way communication. And it gave me the opportunity to communicate to them to take initiatives back. And then it also gave them the opportunity to say to me, hey, that was great, but what if you did this? So it's been really, really helpful. We meet about once a month, and it's been 
we've done it for about a year and it's been super successful. Um, the other thing I started doing is going to employees, going to departments, building relationships and understanding what the employees do. So for example, with our police department, um, they all do the Cooper Fitness Test. Every year they do a Cooper Fitness Test. It's a physical demands um, test that police officers have to do to see if they meet the physical demands of their job. Well, I did it with them. And that was really fun. And they saw me as a peer. And they were like, that's really cool that she's doing this. So that I could understand what their physical capabilities are in developing their programs. I went out to um, Parks and Rec Department, has a, uh, a cleanup day twice a year. So I went to their department and we uh, and mulched our cemetery and talked with um, employees about what they and got to know them on a personal level. I was being like them, being relatable kind of what Dee was talking about. Um, another example, so I talked about our solid waste department. Um, we created, so they can't, they said, Jana, we can't come to your lunch and learns. We can't do a walking challenge. So I used them, I went out on their route, and we took pictures of them using their tra trash trucks as their fitness exercise equipment, and we did exercise with the truck. And we made exercise cards, so they all have 12 cards on a, that's laminated and on a ring in their trucks that they can do. And we did it, it was fun because we did it different times of the year. So the pictures show um, winter weather and they show summer weather because you have to fight the elements, right, when you're driving a trash truck. So that was an example. And um, showing appreciation, we, um, in, this kind of goes back to that social peer pressure thing, we did a campaign to show your employees appreciation. So for Valentine's Day, if you're in high school, when you could send a note or a carnation to a friend in, um, in high school and you pay two bucks and it would go to some type of, I don't know, K's or national something society to raise money, right? So we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we did that for employees? And we thought we'd maybe get 200 carnations, right? We got over 650 carnations to give out to co-workers in every department. We had streets workers appreciate, there's one female in our streets department, and the guys all gave her a carnation. And it was just amazing to see, and people, the, hump, the people that are like, I got a carnation? I didn't give anybody a carnation. So what do you think is going to happen next year? I imagine we're going to give out 1,200 carnations next year. But it's just creating trust and um, developing relationships within, within the department. It's been really successful. And in the short time I've been there, they went from thinking that I'm crazy, who is this girl telling me I can't drink soda, to inviting me to the departments and asking me for advice. It's been really fun.